The building blocks of progressive, livable, and sustainable communities will never be complete without appropriate and responsible action to mitigate and to adapt to the effects of climate change. We can never lose sight of our responsibility to the future. The economic agenda cannot and will not ever be incompatible with our climate change agenda. Climate change is now an important criterion in our integral national policies, in planning, decision-making, up to the implementation of programs. The potential advantages of such enlightened policies extend to jobs and livelihood, with the unlocking of the development of the green and blue economies. We have learned many painful lessons from past disasters, but we continue to be alert and prepared in our disaster response. It has, in fact, been commented that sometimes we are overprepared for such natural disasters. Well, to continue that, we are reorganizing our response teams to make them more adaptable, agile, and effective in times of calamities and crises with a clear unity of command. Our ev evacuation centers are being upgraded to withstand the greater forces of the new normal of extreme weather, as well as other natural and man-made disasters. Furthermore, new evacuation centers are also being built, of which 55 have already been completed. We remain committed to global decarbonization goals and the reduction of our carbon footprint. We preserve and protect the treasure that is our forests, their value to the environment, to the ecology, and the economy is incalculable. We have adopted the concept of the circular economy, using nature as our model. The aim is to keep raw materials in a closed loop. In our world with scarce resources, the circular economy allows us to fully use these resources, minimize waste, and reduce the need for new resources, just as it is in nature. Just like our climate change action, this new system requires the participation of all sectors of society, up to each individual citizen for it to succeed. Only a whole of government and whole of society approach will enable us to do all of these. It is necessary to apply all the resources that are at hand if we are to progress as quickly as we need to. Collaboration is the key between and among government offices and between government and the private sector, between industries and the academic, between government and international partners, and most importantly, collaboration between and among our populace. Kakailanganin natin ang tulong at kakayahan ng buong pamahalaan at ng buong bansa. And so, we shall do the same for the next five years. We seek not only to become more effective, but more, to become truly transformative. This approach will be operationalized through the interagency cooperations, as well as through coordinated efforts between and among the three branches of government and the independent constitutional bodies. We have organized private sector advisory councils and national local mechanisms to establish the needed linkages. Once again, on this same principle, I urge the government to enact a new government procurement law and a new government auditing code. This to make government procurement and auditing more attuned to these changing times. We will give effect to the mandate of the Constitution and the Local Government Code as clarified by the Supreme Court very soon. Almost all the required devolution transition plans of the LGUs are done. To fully prepare them for optimal devolution, the necessary technical and financial assistance is being extended to our local governments. In everything that we do, the enduring Filipino quality of Bayanihan will still be our guide. Limang taon mulang, mula nung matinding kaguluhan, babango na ang Mara Marawi City. Na nung... <laughs> Nanunumbalik na ang sigla sa pamayanan, maraming proyekto ang nakumpleto at mga infrastrukturang na itatayo. Kasalukuyan na tayo nagpoproseso ng tulong panansyal para sa mga biktima ng Marawi Siege upang sila ay makapagsimula muli. Naway mamayani ang pag-asa. Naway magpatuloy ang pagkakaisa.
pagmamatyag at paghahangad ng kapayapaan at kaundaan. We are proud of the progress that the BARM has taken. We will, it will be self-governing. It will be self-governing, it will be progressive, and it will be effective. But this was only made possible because of the cooperation of all key groups. We talked to the local governments, the royal families, the MNLF, the IMLF, MILF, were all consulted and represented in this transition phase. The international community has also supported us in this smooth transition. Former adversaries are now partners in peace. Its functions have been defined and its basic laws are now being written. Through the BARM, we have strengthened the nation's prospects for finally achieving sustainable progress anchored on a true and lasting peace in Southern Philippines. We will continue to support the progress of the BARM, a pace with our singular vision for all Filipinos. A strong and stable rule of law will strengthen the foundation of our transformation. Our police and armed forces are being strengthened and modernized to be more effective in maintaining peace and order and in defending our sovereignty. We fully support the judiciary's efforts to improve the justice system and to protect constitutional rights. The campaign against illegal drugs continues, but it has taken on a new face. It is now geared towards community-based treatment, rehabilitation, education, and reintegration to curb drug dependence amongst our affected citizenry. Last year, we launched the Buhay Ingatan Drogay Ayawan, or BIDA, program and established an additional 102 Balay Silangan Reformation Centers nationwide. We will relentlessly continue our fight against drug syndicates, shutting down their illegal activities, We will shut down their activities and dismantle their network of operations. Unscrupulous law enforcers and others involved in the highly nefarious drug trade have been exposed. I will be accepting their resignations. In their stead, we will install individuals with unquestionable integrity who will be effective and, and trustworthy in handling the task of eliminating this dreaded and corrosive social curse. We cannot tolerate corruption or incompetence in government. For almost half a century, some of our fellow Filipinos have taken to arms to make their views known and felt. We are now at the point in our history when their armed struggle has evolved. We have now progressed together towards peace and development. We have incorporated capacity building and social protection into our reintegration programs to guarantee full decommissioning of former combatants. Through community development and livelihood programs, the Barangay Development and Enhanced Com Comprehensive Local Integration programs have been effective in addressing the root cause of conflict in the countryside. To complete this reintegration process, I will issue a proclamation granting amnesty to rebel returnees, and I ask Congress to support me in this endeavor. Our, jo our journey to progress requires not only unity and social cohesion amongst our people, it is also imperative that our nation remains intact and inviolable, our sovereignty preserved. We will protect our sovereign rights and preserve our territorial integrity in defense of a rules-based international order. <laughs> With our national interests paramount, we will always pursue constant dialogue and diplomatic approaches to the resolution of any issue that may arise. So the initial results of our efforts inspire confidence. Let us continue to be relentless in our aspiration of peace and progress. 
This has not been the work of a single person, neither a single branch of government, nor even the whole government acting alone. This is the collective synergy achieved by all Filipinos working together. It took a whole of nation effort to achieve this immediate recovery from our pandemic slump. Unity was what made us rise once more. Nagsisimula pa lamang tayo. Ang pagbangon ng ating bayan ay magpapatuloy pa. Hinihiling ko ang inyong tiwala at pakikiisa. Sa ganitong paraan, makakamtan natin ang ating tanging hangarin, ang maginhawa, matatag at panatag na buhay para sa lahat ng Pilipino. Makikipagtulungan tayo ng mabuti sa Kongreso para sa mga mahalagang batas na kinakailangan para sa ating tuloy-tuloy na pag-ahon. And once again, I appeal to Congress for its support for the following priority legislations. The essential tax measures under our medium-term fiscal framework, such as excise tax on single-use plastics, VAT on digital services, rationalization of mining fiscal regime, motor vehicle users charge, road users tax, the military and uniform personnel pension. Amendment of the Fisheries Code, Amendment of the Anti-Agricultural Smuggling Act, Amendment of the Co Cooperative Code, New Government Procurement Law, New Government Auditing Code, Anti-Financial Account Scamming, Tatak Pinoy Law, the Blue Economy Law, Ease of Paying Taxes, LGU Income Classification, and the Philippine Immigration Act. In the past year, it has been a source of great hope and optimism to me to now know that there is an enormous pool of highly competent and dedicated workers serving in our government. It is up to us to provide good leadership and guidance. They love the Philippines and have responded to our call. I have stated before that my confidence in our future was grounded in our world-class quality workforce, be they the farmers in the field, corporate giants, government officials, school teachers, health workers, or employees. That confidence has been further buoyed by the demonstration of love for the Philippines. Every Filipino has unanimously risen to the challenge that we have made to them to be part of our nation's future. Handa silang maghandog ng tulong dahil mahal nila ang kanilang kapwa Pilipino at mahal na mahal nila ang Pilipinas. And thus, with this in my heart, I know that the state of the nation is sound and is improving. Dumating na po ang bagong Pilipinas. Maraming salamat po sa inyo.